everyone, and welcome to another episode of Looking for Love in All the Wrong Dust Jackets, a show where three disgruntled Harpers talk to you about everything we love in romance, whether that's books, movies, TV shows, whatever we like. My name's Liz. I'm Danny. And I'm Wiggles. And welcome to the episode. This week, we are discussing the new movie on Amazon Prime, The Idea of You, based on the book with the same name. Anyway, before we get started talking about the movie, I do have to warn you, I have to let the people know that we are crass, unhinged, rather unladylike. We're going to swear. We're going to talk about all of the naughty times. And if you're not into that, you've been warned. Since when am I unladylike? Since when are you ladylike? That's the real question. I enunciate my swears like a fucking lady. Thank you very much. Anyway, um, what have you guys been up to? Get me caught up with your lives. All right. So I read Stalling for Time, My Life as an FBI Hostage Negotiator by Gary Nosner. He is one of the negotiators that was involved with trying to prevent Waco from becoming what Waco became. And so it's a really interesting perspective because uh, basically his tactics were ignored and he believes contributed to the problem. If not, the, he doesn't imply that it fully caused it, but he's definitely like, this was some shady shit. Yeah. Uh, but he his book doesn't just cover Waco. It uses it as one of the examples, but it's mostly about him talking about his work um, in general as a FBI hostage negotiator and how you should talk to people. So it was really interesting. Four stars. Noise. Yeah. Danny, what did you do? So I've really done a lot. We had a very long weekend and it was very busy, so I didn't actually get any reading done, but I was like, I just need some chill time and I'm dog sitting right now. So I was like, I'm going to play The Sims and watch some Call the Midwife. Mm -hmm. So that was what I did. Liz. Yeah. I read Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher, which is the first in her Lakeland Billionaires series, which is Kind of just like a repeat of Dreamland Billionaires, except they're in a small town in Michigan, maybe? Sure. Um, but it didn't really capture me the way the Drakeland... Sorry. The, <laughs> the Drakeland. <laughs> it didn't really capture me the way the Dreamland Billionaires did. Oh. It was like a 3.5. Like, it was fine, but it was... It just didn't... I don't know. I didn't have the spark. Oh. oh. I was looking forward to reading that one. You might enjoy it. I might, but like also look at my shelves of TBR. If you tell me one's only a meh, it gets passed. I'm sorry. <laughs> Fair enough. No. So why don't I tell you a little bit about this movie? Mm -hmm. um, okay. So the idea of you is based off of a book by Robin Lee. I think that's how you say it. If I'm not saying it right, don't crucify me. I admittedly didn't look it up. Um. Uh, look, I'm just saying my truth. Hey, you just Som gotta. Sometimes facts I'm over here there. with good facts. Sometimes I'm here with shiplap. So deal with that. Did you say shiplap? I sure did. <laughs> oh boy. All right. <laughs> the girls have got to get it. Anyway, uh, yeah. so she wrote a book of the same name. It's been long rumored that it is based off of the life of Harry Styles um, and his May-December romances that he's had. Apparently, I wouldn't know. <laughs> like, you could, this article literally could have been like, Harry Styles is this man to a T, and I'd be like, sure, sure. Sure, okay. Um, go for it. I'm too old for this, which uh, we'll talk about in a little bit. So anyway, we have our... Uh, author who has said that while uh harry styles life is not specifically the inspiration for Hayes campbell um it's a combination of yes harry styles and other boy bands um and also her husband uh, her ex and and things like that um and also eddie redmayne so t take that okay for what you will and so, yeah, this is another in the, the line of Amazon creations of romance novels to movies. Um, I would say it's about on par in quality. Um, it has some bigger named actors, as you will see. Um, but that's about all I have for you about this movie. So, Danny, what's this movie about? Okay, so this movie is about a woman who's an art dealer, and she is a divorced mother. Her daughter is 16, and... Um, her ex-husband pays for her daughter to go to Coachella with some of her friends 
and have this meet the band experience and everything, this whole VIP experience. And then at the last second, he bails. He's supposed to take her to it, and then he he decides he has a meeting. And so he bails on them, and she has to take them. Well, she then meets the – he's kind of the lead singer, isn't he? I mean, as much as any boy band has a lead singer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't think he's like – I think it's supposed to be the typical boy band, but like every time you see him singing, he's like front and center right. of it. So, But he's in a boy band, and it's called August Moon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure is. Um, and she meets him accidentally because she goes out to what she thinks is like the VIP bathroom area and walks into his trailer and then just assumes he's a guy using the bathroom in this trailer and then like walks in and uses his bathroom. <laughs> like you do. Like you do. And so that's kind of how they meet. And then they, he shows up at her art gallery and everything. So discuss. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, let's go ahead and maybe just start with the big topic it which is the age gap yeah let's do that so at the beginning of the movie she is 39 but very quickly she has her 40th birthday party Mm -hmm. and he is 24 right yep i don't know if that actor is actually 24 i'm gonna find out he's 29 that makes sense i already looked it up that makes sense (laughs) um but and anne hathaway is like 41 or something yeah yeah i was Anne Hathaway is 40, believable. Um, in the, his name, Jesus Christ. Nicholas, and I don't remember his last name. Nicholas Gazalting? Gazalting? Gazalit? Gazlot? <laughs> Nicholas G. Nicholas, Nikki G. Nikki G. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he would hate us calling him that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he, 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 did, I did not believe is 24. No, I didn't either. And that made it less uncomfortable? Correct. But not enough. So... Here's my thoughts on this because I I enjoyed the movie. But here's my thoughts on the the age gap. Age gaps are interesting. They're they're a trope or a common like trope for a reason. Reverse age gaps are even more fascinating because they're just so uncommon mm-hmm. um, in media and I think probably also in real life. But I don't have like a study in front of me to say yes or no on that. 24, as we've talked about before, is just a little too young uh-huh. to get involved in that. Yeah, I the. <sighs> I w- sort of was able to ignore it for a really long time until there's this moment where they're talking about their pasts and yeah, their, and, w- and core moments of who this person is as a character. And she talks about her divorce that happened three years ago and having a kid in her 20s, right? And he talks about not getting into a Christmas carol at 14, right? And like when you're having that conversation, you you should be like, ooh, Ooh, you that's that's not that long ago for you. Right. Yuck. Yuckers. Yeah. And I really don't mind age gaps, but I I prefer it when like they start and the younger person's in like in their late twenties. Mm-hmm. Like they've had the experience. And I realize he's got a lot of experiences because he's been out in the world and of the world a little bit more than most people his age at that point but still that is the one thing that makes me feel a little less uncomfortable with it is just because as a pop star who's been a pop star since he was like 14 i think Mm -hmm. because that's when he talks about getting into the band he has a lot different experiences than the average 24 year old Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so could he be more mature could he be more emotionally intelligent Yes. It's is he? Possible, I, I suppose. So. But it also, the second I start hearing myself thinking, oh, maybe he's more mature, I get immediately grossed out when I start to think about it in reverse, right? Like, right. how many times has that been the excuse for why older men feel entitled to be with younger women? And I'm like, ugh. I think the other thing that's really interesting is there is a line. It's a line I really liked mm-hmm. by Solen's friend at her 40th birthday party which is and i'm paraphrasing something along the lines of you don't really become a person until you're 30 yep Mm -hmm. and then from 30 to 40 you're trying to figure out who the hell that person is because your 20s is just chaos yes Mm -hmm. and that feels very real to me in my experience it was certainly true for me well for a movie that's trying real hard to um make you believe that there's nothing wrong with what the two of them are doing they do emphasize age quite a bit because there is that moment there's the discussion of like how old her daughter will be in five years right Mm -hmm. and 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 that comparison there's also a moment 
before they break up for the second time, depending right. on what you consider, um, where one of his friends who's in the band, can't think of his name, on par for me, uh, <laughs> makes like brings up the moment that she was like, oh, this kind of convinced me that he was like really sweet, which is when they sing one of their hits and act like they changed up the set so he could sing it specifically to her. Um, he reveals that, that that's all fake and it's just something they do right it's something they do when they find a girl hot right and she's obviously upset because she realizes like i'm a fucking idiot Mm -hmm. in this moment sure and he asks her he's like or or says something like he was just screwing around and she goes no he was being a guy in his 20s Mm -hmm. yeah and it's like so you get the point (laughs) anyway you can't see the gestures, but they're they're irritated and <laughs> frantic. Um, but there are many gestures. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, though, because if you were to tell me he was 26 or 27, literally just a handful of years older, mm-hmm. and she's still her age, I would have been okay with it a lot more. Yeah. There's just same. something so big that seems to happen between, like, 22 and 26 or 27. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm 1000% <laughs> in agreement with you. Like if, if if someone like that age came at me when I was in my when I was 24, right? Which there would would have been plenty of opportunity for that to happen because I was often at that age the youngest person working in the room and I w- would be like, "Hello, people in their 40s and 50s, how goes it?" Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a mature human yet. Would you like to converse? And they're like, "No, thank you." Uh <laughs> <laughs> But like i don't know how do how do you relate to somebody who's on that level well and here's the other thing i am 36 years old i will be 37 this year yeah um i will be 37 this year i wouldn't want to hang out with 24 year old me Mm-mm. Mm-mm. and i was a fairly mature 24 year old but i don't want to hang out with 24 year old me Mm-mm. she was an asshole 24 year old me like really thought she was something she yep. sure did but also, like, as somebody who's in the dating pool, if you will, as shallow as it might be. It is shallow <laughs> indeed. Uh, I have, like, had people try to match with me who are, like, in their 20s. And I'm like, ew, no. <laughs> I'm only 35, right? So, the, like, even at 35, the, the, the idea of dating a 24-year-old horrifies me (laughs) nothing could be less interesting to me like mm -mm. they're not like they said they're not a person yet (laughs) i will say though if you really start thinking about what if you really start breaking it down like what are the big things that a 24 year old is struggling with that often keeps them in a completely different universe and it's things like at the very beginning of their career Mm -hmm. he's not Mm-hmm. Correct. Um, struggling financially or trying to f- discover financial independence. He has that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and just like generally a slew of experiences, usually ones that kind of beat you down because <laughs> that, that really brings character. And he's had plenty of experiences. So mm-hmm. like he, he's not every 24 year old. Sure. Correct, but he is but... also so much a 24 year old guy yeah. because his idea of a romantic gesture is going into her art exhibit and buying everything and not knowing fuck all about any of the art and i like i found that entire scene insulting i actually was really happy that she got mad at him yeah yes that was the correct response yes like when she got angry at him i was like oh fuck yeah at a girl mm-hmm. yeah these are real artists and you're not just buying objects to go put in a warehouse that you'll never see which is in fact what he does no he puts them in his flat in london the only like mention we get of it is that he hasn't even been home to un to open the packages so well they're probably just sitting there yeah they probably are but that's his life he's Mm -hmm. never home so Mm -hmm. but then there's also sort of that part of it where it's like okay so you bought up all this stuff so it will never be seen Mm mm-hmm isn't that anybody who buys art for their home, though? I mean, like, unless you're hosting a lot. Sure. But I mean, like, if it's not even going to be seen by him. True. I will say I did love the romantic gesture of getting the painting that she is obsessed with mm-hmm. that her friend will, like, never sell that he bought it for her. That I loved. When that showed up and she had just broken up with him and it was sitting in her house, I was like, it's the painting. It's the painting. And I loved that painting. I want that painting. 
I learned from this movie. Well, it solidified something. I'm I already knew. I don't understand art. <laughs> so I got to be honest. Uh, that painting kind of just looked like something you'd find if you typed in to Google like acid trippy background. Sure. Um, I loved it. It made me happy. I liked it. I don't more know. than that. I don't understand her deep connection with it. But that's the point of art is yeah. that it's going to hit everybody different. There was no piece that they showed that hit me in any way. <laughs> I uh, okay. Most of the stuff that was in her gallery, absolutely not. It was very boring to me. No, I, the ceramics that she first showed him, I was like, those look like they actually belong in a museum because they look like they were made three thousand years ago. <laughs> right. They were also very beige. Yeah. Well, so okay, I'm not gonna like do a whole fucking art lesson here, but I will talk about two things. Just two things for you to take home and mull over, okay? So a lot of times with sculpture, it's not about creating something that is perfect because machines can do that for us now. So like, what the fuck's the point? Oh, right. I get that. So now the point has really become exploring movement and how well you can demonstrate that with the medium. I can see that, yeah. Which makes sense with the pieces that were chosen. In terms of the, the beigeness of it all, that is a hangover from some white imperialist bullshit because um, they, they saw all these Greek statues where all the paint had melted away over the centuries, right? And they were like, oh, the Greeks, they loved white marble statues. That is the greatest thing ever. We will emulate it. And they've been emulating it ever fucking since. And th the reality is they were completely gauche. They were so colorful. They were obnoxious. Like, they're hard to look at. It's like a rose art painting. So They Lisa Franked that shit? They 1000% did. <laughs> um, so there's your art history lesson. <laughs> all I could think with all the beigeness is, because this has nothing to do with actual art, but all I could think of, oh, look, it's the millennium, millennial beige. That's right also trope. what I thought. In the context of you are talking to somebody who has fallen so deeply in love with art and to the point that now is known in her community for bringing art to the community it has this art store and you're going to come in and you're going to be like what was the thing he said the the spaghetti noodle tiles yeah <laughs> I, that was very <laughs> insulting to me i'm like i don't even like them because they're so beige and i'm insulted for the artist right because it takes a lot of work to do what they did on those well, and a lot of artists who who aren't doing art that is um, specifically um, trying to achieve a singular object play with texture and movement and color and things like that. Um, and it's that play that is what a lot of people really like about it. That doesn't mean that's for everybody, but that is what the appeal is. And so he's just like, oh, they took spaghetti noodles and put it on. I'm like, <laughs> bro, read the room. She's getting right? so mad. <laughs> Nah. So that's a pretty common thing, like in all these millionaire, billionaire romances where the guy just rolls up and buys all the things. Like when we read Twisted Love by Anna Huang and at the end, what's his face? Alex just rolls up and is like, I'm going to buy all of your photography. And it's like, you're not actually helping no the idea of that like senior senior uh showcase or whatever is to get her name out there right yeah totally buy one or two if yeah that's what you're yeah going for but not everything then you're just hoarding her and her stuff yes and her ex like expression of herself right it was and very preventing stockery. other people from being able to experience it yeah and for her to be able to get a fair critique from people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that would have that would have pissed. It would have pissed me off too. I was a little mad that she wasn't upset about it. I was like, but the whole point is to get your name out there. It feels to me, and I'm gonna try to keep myself from going too far down the political rant, but it feels very much to me like this is um a reaction to capitalism and this idea that what you are and what you do doesn't have any worth unless somebody pays for it and it kind of grosses me out and by kind mm -hmm. of i mean it fully grosses me out <laughs> um because also like yes i'm sure that those artists are really excited that their piece is sold but also how excited they're gonna be when they realize that like they didn't sell because people were really excited about them. They sold because this random dude wanted to make a romantic gesture. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. And it just, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure it was supposed to be cute on some level, but Sloan, Sloan? So, no, that was a different book that we read. <laughs> yes. Selene. <laughs> Selene. Um, did have the right reaction. 
But then they went to the warehouse and that was nice. Their banter and flirting was cute. Mm -hmm. That is true. It was. I was more interested in the pieces that were there than anything that was in her her store. Yeah. Yes. I'm still not entirely convinced that that calendar was actually a piece of art and not just her fucking with him. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Right? I I genuinely thought she was going to say psych at any moment. Right. I was waiting for it and was like... I was waiting for her to be like, you're an idiot. (laughs) This is the consequence of you being dumb. Right. (laughs) unfortunately never came i do get what she's trying to say with that piece um and i could tell that it was a painted canvas but i was also just like i have for all of my defense of the art that i've done today (laughs) i have a really big um pet peeve if you will with people who are what I like to call sensitive artists, which are the ones who are like, my art is so brilliant because of blah, blah, blah. And I'm so smart because I went to art school and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, but what does it mean? What are you, what are you trying to convey? Because all art is, is telling stories in different mediums, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Like whether it's a song or a sculpture or whatever. Right. And so what are you trying to tell? And most people who have that, like my art is so amazing. I don't know why that's my snobby art art voice but it is i like it mm-hmm. big fan um don't have that answer or they make shit up on the fly and you can tell they're making shit up on the fly because you're like that doesn't make sense am i i gotta just say it i just gotta get out there modern art makes no sense makes no sense i literally just said art doesn't make any sense modern art those are two different things that's all they were doing was modern art that's all we looked at well for the most part there was some like we don't got time for that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, let's move past the art discussion. Yeah. Let's move away from that. Mm-hmm. And um, I have to say, I loved the first part of this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, when they go back to her house and he's just kind of trying to like do the typical, hey, no, don't go away. Please continue to hang out with me. Mm-hmm. We're having fun. Mm-hmm. I'm a little confused about the fridge situation. I totally understand that her fridge broke down. I'm still confused where she's saying she's getting ice when her fridge broke down, but that's a different conversation. Continuity was not super strong in this movie. I just need to say that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but I'll bring up the big continuity issue I had later. Okay. Okay. I will say she said my fridge broke down again. So maybe she has like a deep freeze in the oh, garage sure. or something that she has ice in. Yeah. That, that does make sense. If she, if she, I know. think if it's happening enough times that you can confidently figure out moments into opening your fridge, what has happened, um, you need a new fridge. Yeah. Yeah. You need a new fridge. I, I'm, I'm just going to put that out there. Um, I did like her house a lot, though. I loved her house. Even though apparently her ex-husband thought it was, didn't like it because it was a starter house. Her ex-husband can suck a bag of dicks. That. And also, I mean, maybe when they bought that house, it was a starter house. But looking at it nowadays, I'm like, no, that's, that ain't no starter house. That's, well, that we did see gorgeous. his house and it looks like one of those. It's a real, McMansion. It's a real douchey, like modern McMansion where they're yeah. like all hard angles and crap. Yeah. Hers was all soft and flowy, and I loved it. it. I did like it. Reminded me a lot of uh, the house of a former professor of mine, and I was just like, "How'd they get her house?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, like the the room with the piano was eerily similar. The like window treatments were similar. Um, I think even like the stairs in the middle um, that went up behind the kitchen. I was yeah. Like, uh, I, d- I think theirs went down. I don't. I don't think theirs went up, if I remember right. But I was just like, ha 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 ha. Yeah. Talking about the piano, though, that kiss at the piano was hot. It was indeed. That was the last time I thought this movie was hot, if I'm being so honest. Really? <laughs> yes. I really enjoyed that kiss. And then I stopped enjoying everything else. Oh. Yeah. I thought the uh, the scenes in in his New York hotel were pretty hot. Yeah. I. I thought they were super awkward. <laughs> the hurt him like <laughs> going down with stairs. Well, okay. Like, first of all, he, she walks in, like takes her coat off, uh, suddenly switches from the, I'm not sure about this. This is not a great idea to, I'm suddenly the most confident in the world woman that there is and is wearing what I would argue is one of the ugliest dresses I've seen be told to me is sexy. <laughs> Really? I liked I that dress. I liked the dress. It. I liked the dress. It was hideous. 
Oh my God, no. No. I mean, I could never wear it because it was a sheath dress and it was like, I think it was like ribbed or something. So that it's that material that will suction to your skin. Yeah. yeah. But you know, Anne Hathaway can wear it. Yeah. Yes, she can. I mean, anybody can wear anything they want. Doesn't oh yeah, make for it a sure. good dress. Makes it, I'm sorry. That dress was ugly. And then like. I liked it. And then he like manages to not go under the dress, but because her dress is so shittily made, he just like reaches in through this like weird side pocket. My interpretation of that is it was not a single piece. It was two pieces, like a top and a skirt. Same. Either way, it was stupid. (laughs) And I hated it. Strong opinion, I know, but I fucking hated it. And everything for the rest of that scene, I was just like, ugh. Really? Yeah. I had the opposite reaction to that. Yeah, but mood same. killer. I was like, ooh. I did mm, not. No, no, I was like, this is hot. And unfortunately, that was the end of like the, the bedroom activity for the rest of the movie. Like, they gave it to us way too quickly. Yeah, I mean, they did like little like fade black things throughout the like traveling. But other than that, there really wasn't much else. Yeah. Although I did enjoy the, the uh, look of him walking across the house to answer the door with no shirt on. Mm-hmm. Well, that's just to look at the man without a shirt. Well, yeah. I know, but don't take this from me. <laughs> the man also doesn't wear a shirt when she's in his trailer. Mm-hmm. Correct. And that that was also nice. I just, <laughs> just want to point that out. That I just like nice. to look at him. I also liked to look at him when he was in red, white, and royal blue. So, you know. He is nice to look at. Although I kind of like this edgier version a little bit better than the like clean cut Prince. 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 Yes. Thing. Apparently, he's in a, a decent number of like romance and rom com yeah, movies. Yeah, he is on the rise as the rom com king right now. Yeah, he's in one called Purple Heart, where he plays a soldier. So, do with that information what you will. I've never seen it, so he's I couldn't also, tell you. He's also the prince in Cinderella, Amazon's Amazon Prime Cinderella. I didn't know Amazon Prime did a Cinderella. I'm not a Cinderella fan. I'm over it, is what I am. Like, there are some Cinderella stories I enjoy, but I'm over it. We don't need any more. We've I had will. enough. So. With the conversation, I, d- I know we already like beat the whole age gap thing with a dead horse. Or we, we beat a dead horse. No, I like it better the first bite. Go. <laughs> we beat it with a dead horse, like you do. Um, but like with this whole thing, like being based on Harry Styles again, it just like really emphasizes to me how weird this is because they're like five years younger ish than us, and I'm still like, no, <laughs> they're too young. <laughs> That's so gross. <laughs> you would think a 30 year old is too young for you? Uh, I mean, not now, but like when they were 24 and I was 29. Yes. Yes. But also just like thinking about the comparison, it really, I think that's one of the things that grossed me out is like if your whole point is I'm telling this story about this guy who is not super in love with the fact that he is a pop star because it's ruining his chances at love and everybody won't leave him alone to the point that it's like ruining the life of the daughter of his paramour if you will yeah uh how do you not realize that you're running face first into the point um at any point in writing that like you writing this book just further contributes to that kind of thing because enough people picked up on the fact that this must be harry Styles. so now every time your book is successful every time this movie is successful they're like speculating about harry Styles' life just a thought i had (laughs) it was an interesting perspective on what like celebrities go through when everything just like people are talking shit for really no reason like i understand yes there's a large age gap it is not a scandalously gross one though Mm -hmm. like there's definitely been like aaron taylor johnson Mm -hmm. and his wife yes Uh uh-huh yes like it's they're both legal and have been for a while it's just it's i i dislike that people lost their brains over the fact that he's dating someone so much older than him it's like yeah but he's he is a 24 year old like he gets to make his life choices Well, I think that no matter what, um, like, even if they would have been much closer in age, I think that that same thing would have happened. Yeah, Mm -hmm. They they probably wouldn't have, like, you know, obviously sunk their teeth into she's a cougar and all that. But it still would have been, oh, he could do so much better. She's just a Mm -hmm. normie living in L.A. Even if it was 30-24, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, It would have been exactly that. Right. 
like this is admittedly a long time ago now but um i remember watching an interview with gary knightley who was at the time starring against um orlando bloom in pirates of the caribbean Mm -hmm. and she was saying that as they were filming one of the scenes um where uh where where they kiss at the end i think Mm -hmm. in the first movie yeah that there were all of these screaming fans just offside a camera gross that were just just that were screaming like awful things at her and they were like no he's mine and like insane shit right and that's with someone who's relatively on par mm-hmm. like neither one of them was super well known at that point and one might argue it might be Kira Knightley of the two of them because at well, that point Bend It Like Beckham would have come out yeah yeah but also the Lord of the Rings movies came out before that correct Did, at the time of filming though yes I don't know yeah, but at, at least the first one had come out. Yeah, um, because you know they they continually filmed all three of those movies at the same time. Like they continually filmed yeah. them, but they they had at least released the first one. I'll take your word for it. I genuinely, yeah. but but even still, like the it's insane. It's insane. Oh yeah. Also, she was very young when the first Lord of the Ring or when the first uh, Pirates of the Caribbean came out. I think she was just eighteen. Yeah, I, I thought she was she nineteen. Was yeah, yeah. She, either way, she was very young, very very young, and and so it's like even in that situation where it's obviously fake, they're not actually dating. People get crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, even the the one thing that like super creeped me out. There's a lot of things that creeped me out about the way the fans were reacting, mm-hmm. but when they get back together after the Europe tour and or no they haven't they haven't got back together yet but the world just found out about their relationship in Europe and so Selene goes to pick up her daughter from camp and that one mom is like oh my daughter just loves Hayes he he was her favorite she's so upset now and I'm like ew bitch gross right Right? no well and admittedly, it's not something I can relate to. It's not something I can understand. Like, even when I was a Backstreet Boys fan when, at, like, peak Backstreet Boys. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I was, like, a teen, barely, like, 13 years old. And I'm just like, these are the best singers in the world. <laughs> <laughs> We all had that moment. Or maybe just me. And- <laughs> well, I mean, it soothed us while we were driving through a large city the other day. Right? So. And so you got to give credit where credit's due. It's true. But even then, I wasn't like, oh, they're not allowed to be with other people. And, like, there's, they're my dream man, so they're never allowed to date anybody. That's weird. It yeah. is weird. It's weird. I'm sorry. If you do this, you need to do some self-reflection. It's yeah. true. I The way that they were like, you can't have him because he's mine, blah, blah, blah. Bitch, she pulled him yeah good for her good for her like it's it's i never understand the like obsession no with stars like no. i i have crushes we all know i have a deep abiding love for adam driver mm-hmm. i could never actually date him one i couldn't pull him two he has my brother's first name and that's just it's off limits it's, it's off limits yeah but i i love him i i think he's super hot he is a genuinely kind human being from what i've heard i do not ever expect anything to come of that he is married and has children right good for him well the part that like just super grossed me out is it was the mom saying that about her daughter uh-huh. right it's yeah. like what the fuck right well what i what i don't understand about it like because who doesn't have a celebrity crush? I also have like have had like a random crush on a random stranger that I met one time and I'm like, oh, he's cute. Look at right? him over there mm-hmm. buying cupcakes for his mom. <laughs> um, that person Based doesn't on a real exist. Story? No, unfortunately, that, that was entirely made up. But that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, but I don't then go, hey, that's a random stranger who is seemingly on the same like celebrity level, which is none, right? Um I bet I get to be obsessed about that person's life. That's fine. Right? Because that would be fucking stalking and insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why do you think that it's okay if somebody has fame for whatever reason? It's weird. It's fucking weird. They get to have personal lives. Yes. Fuck. Well, and then on top of it, the part that like I I couldn't wrap my mind around and I, I know it happens is all of the like paparazzi literally on her own driveway and on her own lawn following her to her door and i'm like you are on private property right like my first thought process would have been like lawyer up man yeah yep you're gonna have to be pushed back quite a 
quite a distance. Yeah. Well, they I think they probably did at some point because then when um her ex husband comes to get her daughter, they are actually across the street. Mm. Well, ex husband is not an interesting person to go bum rush and try to get like True. close ups of. Right. God, he's an asshole. Oh, I didn't yeah. disagree with his like thought process there because he's trying to protect his daughter and everything, but like he's a real big prick. Well, they do only really give us Solen's side of that. Mm-hmm. And Anne Hathaway delivered an amazing monologue in the beginning when she's talking about the divorce. Mm-hmm. But <sighs> that moment, he was right. He he approached it wrong. But he was definitely right to say, like, this is not an environment for our daughter to be in. What are you mm-hmm. doing? Mm-hmm. Well, the thing that I struggle with with this movie, and I really struggle with it with most Amazon movies, Red, White, and Royal Blue included, yeah, is that they give us a really shallow picture of who these people are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, for as interesting as her home is um, architecturally and with the props that it's filled, a lot of them don't feel like they're necessarily connected to the character. They're just things mm-hmm. that are there to fill the room, right? And that's a really good place where you can tell us who these people are. Mm-hmm. And they don't take advantage of moments like that. And they waste time with weird cuts that we don't need that don't really help tell the story. Like there's a really bad pacing and character building problem with Amazon romances. Yeah. This, this one, especially because yeah, like I said, I loved the first part of it. And then she goes to New York and there's like kind of a montage of them in his hotel room. Mm -hmm. And then she follows him on this Europe tour, Mm -hmm. which sounded like hell to me, quite honestly. Um, right. I know I'd have been Europe. like, fuck no. I'll no see part you in of LA. that was cute to me. No. A romantic trip to Europe sounds fantastic. Being on the plane with all of like <laughs> oh the my other God. boys. Walking in, I was like, oh dear God. No. Yeah. I, like that. I literally shouted at the TV and I was like, and for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> I was like, absolutely not. You, you need to leave. You need to leave right now. Yeah. Mm. But that's when the pacing like really got weird to me Mm because they just tried to cram this entire summer vacation for I don't even know how long they were gone a few weeks, Mm -hmm. if not more. And they just did it through all of these like splice cut. That's probably not the right term. um, Like little vignettes and and, and this montage scene. And that's the part that upset me because I was like, you've built up a really great meet cute and a really great like let's see where this could go moment Mm -hmm. and then you're just trying to rush through the the fun part right yeah well the the best way that i can describe it um because this is now my fourth amazon romance movie that i've watched four yes i um we watched the hating game um red white and royal blue this movie and then i also watched something from tiffany's um which i did not like whatsoever um and the hating game was an amazon one yeah pretty sure if not it had the exact same pacing and i watched it on amazon so um, (laughs) so i'm holding them accountable (laughs) big facts yeah anyway so the the problem that i've i've can run into with all these movies is they feel like they were written in the same format as like a hallmark movie sure and they just got better actors like that's that's the only reason that's the only thing masking how badly constructed their overall plot and storytelling was is that they have really good actors coming in and delivering really solid performances yeah the the acting in this is standout yeah yeah but it's not enough to cover the fact that like the storytelling doesn't make sense well i think it comes back to again books translated to movies to me i've never really liked that Mm -hmm. unless you just completely change it unless you just take like the basic concept and go okay now we're going to create a movie um because technically um love at first sight which was a netflix one Mm -hmm. i thought that one was successful yeah yeah or like um to use another movie that's like it's a beloved book for me, but the 1990s, like 1999 or something like that version of Little Women feels really authentic to the story, even though it changes parts of the plot. Mm. Or or uh, I'm trying to think of another example where that happens. Um, there are plenty and I'm just drawing a blank. But like that's a really good example of like you don't have to match beat for beat, but you do need to match the essence of the story you're telling, um, which ironically is why I hate 
the more recent one because it is matching beat for beat, um, but totally inauthentic to the story. Yeah, I haven't read the idea of you the book, but it kind of felt like this movie was trying to just take like the really big plot points yes. and cram them together instead yeah. of going, we only have two hours. We're going to need to cut a bunch. What are we what are the big things we're cutting? Here's an example. Lord of the Rings. Right. Yeah. Great movies. I, like having read the books, I feel like they're it's very um, representational. There are lots of things that had to be cut. Those books are thick. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, no offense to Tolkien fans, but a little dry sometimes. <laughs> Getting through the Lord of the Rings, the book is very difficult. Uh, yeah. That's why I haven't read them. I'm just going and I, I think I've decided that's a life choice for me. I'm just going to enjoy the movies and say those are near perfection. That's all I need. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I will say with this movie, speaking of like the pacing and how they they went through this, I feel like they didn't do enough of the like cutesy relationship stuff stuff where they didn't show me enough of that to make me care about the relationship enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or to believe either the either of them when they say that they're in love with each other. Correct. Yes. Are you? Okay. News well it, to me. Or to see a reason why she would go back again when she knows she's going to have to fight with all this fucking shit mm -hmm. and deal with all of it. Mm -hmm. Like the last time, fine, I kind of get that her daughter's out of school. That's the point. You know, mm -hmm. they're they're both older now. They're the backlash is not going to be as bad. But when she when they go back the, the second time and like they have the discussion with her daughter and everything and her daughter's friends. And they're, you know, going to take themselves off social media, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't, I didn't see enough of the relationship to care or to believe that they would be willing to go through all of this. Mm -mm. Well, the kids make sense because in their eyes, they're just like, look, Hayes Campbell is going to be dating our friend's mom. He's going to be around. Look at this cool love story. It's mm -hmm. so like star-crossed lover, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I agree with you. The, the Europe tour which is supposed to be the thing that solidifies their like romantic love for each other was just told so quickly that I think it would have made way more sense instead of doing trying to like give clips of them in all these different cities of just like picking a few moments and really fleshing those out and being like here we have shown you like three scenes mm -hmm. of them being super romantic and cute with each other mm -hmm. Well, and there's also a moment where he kisses her at a table and she said that was really reckless. And so we never got like a conversation where they talk about boundaries as far as like hiding their relationship and stuff. Because obviously they're not hiding it from the band, but like they seemed to have been kind of trying to hide it publicly and stuff. Right. Like he calls her his calls her his art consultant or whatever when they first walk on the plane but they're with the band all the fucking time they know what's happening that part was actually super confusing to me because he introduces her as his art consultant and then there's never really like any moments with the band or with anybody on the plane except for one time he falls asleep on her shoulder and one of the adults i mean they're all adults but one of the like production people whatever mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sees so then Selene like pulls away from him a little bit and I'm like, okay, are you still hiding it? How could you possibly be hiding it after like two weeks right? from the people that you're with all the time? Her mm -hmm. going to see him in New York totally makes sense to me. But oh, that yeah. entire trip sort of feels like it's just this false plot shoved in in Selene's life because leading up to that, everything she does with her daughter, the conversation she's having with her friends, it all feels really authentic and I'm I'm there for it. I'm believing her story. I'm like really into it. Um, and I'm like, oh, like I love the moment when her and her daughter are jamming out in, in the car on the way yeah. to camp. Mm -hmm. Like all of that felt very, very real. And then there's this moment and th well, moment, this, oh, I don't know, a couple months that they're, yeah. they're out there. Like it just... They didn't do anything to make it feel like that was the same person. Mm -hmm. And like you can make the argument that she's pretending to be another person. Yeah. But then you can't also make the argument that their feelings for each other were real if mm -hmm. it's based on a false premise. Well, and it just wasn't built up enough. Mm -hmm. That was that was that weird turn for me mm -hmm. because like you said, everything up until then were these like genuine 
real moments, these just snippets from her life. And then there was the rush. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they get, and then the only real like full scene we have is the one in Paris where they got their photos taken by a paparazzi. We as the audience know that they don't know that yet. And then that like cool house, that house or whatever that they're mm-hmm. in with, um, some of the band members yeah he runs right. a villa in the in the south of france everything else is a montage yeah. yeah and even following that when it comes out that they're together and whatever um we don't really get any part of her life that isn't centered around him like we get the point where she's like confessing to her daughter and everything like that but like one of the scenes that just was so stupid to me and felt so forced was her one of her close friends that we met for all of a hot second before she she comes in when there's all these people like surrounding the art store and is like what's going on what's going on like she doesn't know that all this has come out and i'm like i don't care how detached from social media you are if one of literally if someone i went to college with 15 years ago that information's gonna find you on the internet right like (laughs) we don't have to be friends (laughs) so so she's like uh, acting like she doesn't know what's going on even though it's been out for a while by that point that those two are dating Mm -hmm. and then it's all just a preamble for us to get one line for man hathaway which is i didn't realize me being happy would be would cause so many people to get this angry or something like that right yeah um also she can say well honey didn't i tell you that people don't like happy women great what a stupid fucking scene and like the thing is it just felt like an like something like oh the author really wants this like quippy thing that she wrote in her book to come through and it's like it doesn't matter this is like it would have come across a lot better if it was the two of them having a like a night in at that yes. woman's house yes and and talking to her about right which she does a little bit at um Selene's house where that same friend at says it was gross when daniel did it because i hate him but i love you so it's okay right and that's yeah. all she has is like these one lines of like yeah. thumbs up girlfriend and yeah. you're like <sighs> but i think the part about it that bothered me the most was just that if you're going to use Um, a character as a vehicle for your plot then give them some plot themselves like that person could literally have been anybody also that line about daniel actually kind of pissed me off because she said that it it was gross when daniel did it because i hate him no it was gross when daniel did it because he was married Mm -hmm. well yeah that's that's really what was gross about that Mm -hmm. the 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 daniel and ava situation which daniel's the ex-husband ava's his new wife who's his young um we don't know how old she is when they got together but she was young Mm -hmm. and that whole thing is just gross because they were still married and he cheated on her for like a year and told everybody except for her which is why she has these massive trust issues yeah this like that i just i hated that line because i feel like it did a disservice to people who do have like an age gap relationship and stuff because i don't like like we've said i don't care Mm -hmm. about an age gap as long as it's not like the really icky kind where it's like that person just turned 18 and i'm 40 no 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 Mm -mm. no no um but uh, his relationship wasn't gross because there was an age gap his relationship was gross because he was married he was cheating on her for a year and everyone or fucking around them knew it that's what made it gross i also don't know what the fuck they were doing with the character of the mistress i can't think of what her name is ava ava i don't like she kept trying to be friends with her. What did you think was going to happen, bitch? Well, again, you gave us a shallow pool of a character. We don't really mm-hmm. understand what the fuck is going on there. So she's like making these like almost jokes. And then it's like, like she like throws out like stay hydrated. And you're like, OK, like are we like having a Reba moment here where the <laughs> mistress is is like going to sort of become friends, but then they don't go anywhere with it. And then when she's like talking with her and explaining like oh i'm gonna leave him and uh i now realize that he's a fucking idiot there isn't really any catharsis there right so like again what is the point why why are we wasting film time on that and we're still dealing with two main characters that don't have enough on-screen time to make sense together yeah i didn't understand that scene either like 
I'm sure it's supposed to show that Daniel is just like a complete asshole and um, hypocritical, which is what she calls him. Mm -hmm. But it didn't really further along anything. It didn't give Selene this courage to pursue the relationship. Mm -mm. It was... She was already in the thick of it at that point. No, that was before that they... That was like right before... Um, oh, you're the, right. You're right. Uh, like the the tabloid stuff came out. He dropped off the car. Yeah, and was like, you should take a picture of this to camp. And you're like, wow, you're a douche. Yeah, especially when she's like, we had a cap on spending, mm-hmm. and he bought her a fucking car. Mm-hmm. She's like, I bought her an easel and paints. Yeah, it didn't really, really add to the plot. Mm-mm. I really never understood the whole her trying to get closer to Ava, trying to get closer to Selene. I'm like. What did you think was ever going to happen? I'm sure that's probably just trying to commiserate with somebody who went through um, maybe not necessarily a similar ending to the relationship, but was with a similar person and wanting to kind of trauma bond over it or have somebody they can vent to and connect to on that level. I think that was also, as millennials, we're not super great at saying, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And that felt like a millennial, I'm sorry. (laughs) Sure, sure, sure. (laughs) Sure, sure. I mean, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. But then they get back together because everybody says it's okay. The daughter says it's okay and even says, why did you leave a talented, kind hot, feminist. kind feminist? Yeah. A hot, kind feminist. Um, and I'm like, you got me there. <laughs> yeah, you did. It's it, it, They're so hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> um. I also like in that conversation when her mom was like, sh- she's like, is he a feminist? And she's like, well, he's still a guy. So. So. Mm. <laughs> that. But other than that, yeah, kind feminist. <laughs> the the thing that kind of sucks about the next portion of the movie is it's all kind of bad. Mm-hmm. Like we have her going to see him at the studio where he's finally doing the music he likes because he's been inspired by her. And their relationship. And they get together and they have like a handful of nice scenes where they're like playing board games with her daughter and all of that. But it really just goes bad quickly with all the paparazzi showing up and then the situation with the the, the dad coming and, and saying, what are you doing? Our daughter should not be in this situation with all of these like paparazzi around her. And then all of her friends at school are being dicks about it. And then they break up again. Like literally it happens so fast. Mm-hmm. And it's not that I don't understand all the breakups. I understand why Selene at the end of the Europe tour would just go, you know, maybe this isn't going to work. And then again, when she's like, this is doing harm to my daughter. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like we spent more of this romantic movie with them broken up than we did with them like growing a relationship. You know what else is super weird to me about this movie and the dynamics that they choose to create? It feels like... They're intentionally making Celine less emotionally intelligent than she should be for her age and making Hayes more emotionally intelligent than he is likely to be for his age so that it's like, oh, well, they can sort of meet in the middle. But like her dramatic breakups with him are so unnecessary. They really are. It's just like you could just be straightforward and honest and be like, listen, this thing between us, like, obviously I'm on board. I get it. But, like, we also have to be responsible about this. I am not... It's not just me in this situation. Right. And so, look, the reality is my kid comes first. And I, yeah. And that means, at least right now, that you and me can't be a thing. And instead she's like, just go! It's yeah. like, what, man? Like, you can, you can speak to somebody like a human being. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? <laughs> well, and at the end of the Europe tour, too, she gets super dramatic when all she learns is that the song she thought he was dedicating to her Mm -hmm. is just something they have done before. And I get that she was a little upset that, you know, maybe he's done with this with other women, but he had a really valid point in saying like, do you think I've never been with anybody else? Yeah. I I thought the same thing too. I was like, ma'am, you are 40. Like, did you, did you not think that they've never done this? I see my read of the situation was not that, she was somehow delusional in that but that the fact that she let herself believe simultaneously that it was more than what it was 
and that it was less than what it was made her feel really stupid and small and like yeah you should a little bit Mm -hmm. like you should look at that situation and be like yeah i'm kind of ashamed of my behavior because i did not act like a woman in her 40s who knows what the fuck she's about i act like a woman who is barely not a teenager anymore and was willing to follow around a guy on tour like a fucking lost puppy. Note the other women in her peer group. <laughs> yeah, the other women who were yeah. on the same tour. That's exactly right. what they're doing. Right. And they the difference is they walked into it knowing that's what they were doing. Yeah. Right? They, th- like, she asks the one, she's like, how long have you two been dating? She's like, dating? She's like, I guess we've been hanging out for a while. Yeah. But what she's really saying is like, honey, please. No, this is not. This is just for fun. We're just having fun. I'm I'm traveling. <laughs> I'm getting a free fucking trip all over Europe. Right. Yeah. Like, please do not kid yourself into believing that I have any idea that I have a claim over this man. I don't yeah. want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I can get her being upset. I I can't necessarily re- to your to your statement about emotional intelligence. Get that she's just like, oh, I can't see you ever again. I could get yeah. her being like, I think I need to go home, and maybe we'll just talk later. Yeah, I I I now see my own reflection, and because of that, I need to take a beat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know that you probably won't like hearing that, but you're gonna have to sit with that anyway because I need to go home. Okay, and you're gonna have to respect that. Yeah, that's simple. Just speak to another person like they're a person. <laughs> Absolutely. What? P- speak to a person like they're a person. Shocking! I, I never knew that information. Classic miscommunication. And it, well, it's not really miscommunication. It's just like completely shutting down. Right. Which I think they try to explain away because of the Daniel ex-husband cheating thing, but which can do a lot of damage. Yeah, do a lot of damage and really fuck you up. Mm-hmm. You want to know something I did like? What? what? For all my complaints. Um, I thought the watch thing was cute. The watch thing was I cute. I did like the watch thing. Mm-hmm. He just keeps leaving his watch behind so he has an excuse to see her. Although part of the reason I thought it's cute, so this is simultaneously a backhanded compliment, <laughs> um, was that it reminded me of the movie John Tucker Must Die when he like gives her the watch to prove that he's actually taking her seriously. So how how mature is the watch thing (laughs) right (laughs) yeah but it was cute yeah i like especially because they bring it back at the end and he he leaves the watch before he leaves for for quote unquote for good what did you think of the ending after they break up because it's doing harm to her daughter Mm -hmm. and he's like we'll revisit this in five years Mm mm-hmm and five years come and they literally do i I mean i guess it was fine i i kind of liked it um what i liked about it though is she's like here's the thing we can absolutely revisit this in five years but if you find a chance to be happy with someone please go Mm -hmm. like i don't want you like hanging around for me and i actually really appreciated that because i it felt more realistic in a way because she's just like here's the thing we are completely done if we want to revisit this, that's fine. But like, go be free. All I can think in my head was five years is a long time to be pining for someone mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you only knew for like, I mean, if we're really stretching it a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really stretching it. Yeah. Probably closer to six months. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> And to be spending more time pining for them to have act than to have actually known them. You're starting again at ground zero and you're also having to undo all of these expectations that you've been building up in your head yeah, for five years. Yeah. You don't know what that other person has been through or yeah. how, how they've changed. He grew facial hair that I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I did like his hair change. Yeah, I yeah. do think I do think that they did a good job other than the facial hair showing that he is aged. I loved that he was on Graham Norton. I was like, hey. I love Graham Norton. I was surprised Mm. that the the, like clips of TV that she was cycling through. I was a lot surprised that they like got the rights to show all of those. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm like, is that what you wasted your money on, though? Are they all Amazon products, though? I didn't. Graham Norton's not. Well, I know that. Always Sunny isn't. I don't think. I don't think so either. Anyway, I I was just surprised. I was like, okay, okay, yeah. I I mean, it was cute. I guess. But at that point, I was just ready for the movie to be done. I mm. was too. Uh, they'd already bored. done too much damage at that point for me to give a fuck. Wiggles, I have a burning need to know all about the continuity er- error that you uh, 
talked about earlier that i mentioned at the top of the podcast yeah. and never got back to yeah um okay so this is another reason why that whole big schmexy time scene didn't really stick with me she talks about not sh- she shows up in one outfit doesn't really have a bag to speak of that is shown in shot um and she says she doesn't have any other underwear and yet her undergarments changed three times i did notice that that they had changed the at fuck? least they yeah. changed at least once because which she could do- definitely didn't have black she, under things yes. on underneath the white yes situation. correct and then all of a sudden she has a black teddy and, yeah. then, and then in another scene in the same hotel room she now has like a black like bra set we don't see the underwear but like what the fuck the only thing i can be thinking when you got time to be changing your underwear ma'am listen the only thing i can be thinking <laughs> like think me what you're thinking <laughs> is that she did actually bring a decent amount of underwear but when you're doing a lot of things yeah unless you take the underwear off right away they kind of can't be reused <laughs> okay fine <laughs> it still doesn't explain why she got why she has a black teddy and like like just i'm saying this is supposed to be one night <laughs> i hated I it when he's ordering food for them and he's like do you want do you want fries yeah lots of fries and she goes and a cookie plate and i'm like that was the most relatable thing that's ever happened what the fuck yeah, is a cookie you, plate it's a plate, plate of, cookies. of cookies i mean like sure but like is that like a thing you can order places? i don't fucking know <laughs> do i look like i pro- fucking probably five star hotel i'm sure they can put together a cookie plate do you think <laughs> that i have enough money to order fucking room service <laughs> No, ma'am. Also, I when don't you were, know what that means. When you were talking about all the underwear sets, I was like, he door dashed them. I don't know why that popped into my brain. But okay, but it. can you imagine? Oh, my God. It's midnight. <laughs> New York. You can call for a door dash. Not McDonald's. No, no. Nay, nay. Not here. Victoria's Secret. <laughs> Listen, I think that it was a really piss poor excuse, honestly, because yeah. how many books, movies, whatever have we consumed where the girl is like i don't have any underwear let me borrow your boxers right (laughs) and that's hot (laughs) it's hot walking around in your in his boxers and like maybe just his shirt buttoned up part of the way it just felt like they were like Mm -hmm. they needed to reinforce for us that anne hathaway is sexy so they were like look at these sexy options we've given you (laughs) nobody needs that reinforced we're all aware (laughs) no she showed up in like the first scene and i was like damn i know i was like damn keeping it tight (laughs) i was damn girl you've had children yeah yeah oh (laughs) <laughs> anyway yeah. so that just bothered me and i felt like the world needed to be a no of what i'm going through <laughs> i just why can't why can't we all have millionaire uh boyfriends and stuff because most millionaires suck but they have money to give to me yeah but like they would expect me to cuddle with i don't them. i don't Maybe. have i don't have millionaire trophy wife energy let alone body <laughs> i don't have the body yada 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 you know what i'm that's saying like, that's why you Same, get the millionaire and then you just use their money to get the body most yeah, of those people buy their bodies need, anyway but you need the body yada yada to get the millionaire it's like which <laughs> came first the chicken or the egg <laughs> um see that's unfortunately when you have to get a millionaire who's like he's a millionaire but he's not you know hot <laughs> <laughs> That's my tragic flaw. I've been going for the hot ones now that I know. Okay, weirdos, time to come out of the woodwork. <laughs> I'm here to be your sugar baby. <laughs> but no, could you get on that? Because like, I would like a, a free trip to Europe <laughs> with your with your millionaire boy toy, right? Wouldn't yeah. that be nice? That'd be so great. What, especially like, bet- like if they were the type who were like afraid of sex, you know, like those like. <laughs> <laughs> so that i could just be like yeah i love you i'm a mr finch level where you could just like make out with him and then it's over right and then i get to go somewhere else you want to be in a relationship where there's no sex um if they're weird and gross yes <laughs> i didn't think they were weird and gross i just said that they weren't hot i mean there's a lot of in between there there is i mean <laughs> wiggles get on that sugar baby shit and then take us to europe listen 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 nothing about me says baby (laughs) (laughs) it says hey hey there strong independent wench (laughs) 
hauling, <laughs> hauling these beer kegs up the mountain. Would you like some help? No, fuck off. That's the energy I give off. <laughs> so, Listen, there's got to be somebody who wants like a beer wench who's carrying, you know, you know, in those videos where they carry like 10 steins in yeah. one hand. And you're like, I want that skill, but also I don't want to practice to get that skill. Because exactly. Because breaking glass scares me. And that's <laughs> like, there's got to be somebody who's really looking for that. And I think you could do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what dating app is that? <laughs> I can't do it no. with 10, but I can do it with five. Uh, beer wenches are us. You know, it could work. It could work. It could work. I doubt it. <laughs> Alrighty then, let's wrap it up. It's time for ratings time. Oh, you put a little pepper on it that time. Put a little pepper. Yeah, put a little <laughs> pepper, pepper on it. Uh, spice. <sighs> I had such high expectations. I feel like there's a really hot kiss, and then there was all of the sexy times in the New York hotel, and then it just petered off. Yeah, I kind of got to give it like a two, just because it, it existed. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't, I mean, that kiss at the piano was hot and then everything else yeah. was kind of womp womp. That's what I was saying. And y'all were like, no. I, I mean, said I said that the kiss at the piano was hot. And then I also said New York was hot. Yeah, I agree that New York was hot. You hated the clothing option in New York. Also, apparently the continuity issue with underwear. Listen, I'm hard to please. <laughs> <laughs> but everything else womp wopped. Yes. Um, so two. I was thinking it's more than that. It's a movie, you guys. We don't get like a woman having an orgasm on screen in movies like ever. Tell that to Meg Ryan. Okay. Well, I haven't seen that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I was thinking more like a three and I'm just going to stick with it. I'm not going to overthink it. Good. Good. I don't want you to think. We don't, we don't have to copy <laughs> each other. That's the whole point of ratings time. It turns out we can have differing opinions. Can Shocker. we? Sometimes. I don't know. There was a time. <laughs> at band camp we what? didn't go to band camp i'm gonna fuck <laughs> <laughs> that one was totally unintentional i'm so sorry mine wasn't <laughs> my pacing was just being an asshole apparently. I'm, I'm not gonna say the word not one of you has to a romance <laughs> there's tension in the air in this room right now <laughs> and it's because no one wants to go first <laughs> I, it's not that I don't, don't want to go first. I'm just like, it wasn't meh. Like a... I'm also giving it a two. Really? Yeah. It. it the, I liked their meeting, but after that, I'm kind of like, well, y you didn't give me any of the work up to a relationship to make me actually believe in it. That seems to be such a common thing in these fucking movies. Uh -huh. And I get that we have a very short amount of time. We have to tell a lot of story in a short amount of time. But if you're telling me this is a romance, mm -hmm. then the one thing you cannot cut is the romance. Correct. Yep. So I was going to... Two. I was going <laughs> to go with like a 2.5. Okay. Overall, 2.5. It was fine. Really? I was like a lot higher than that. Shout out for the two crew. Too many Christmases. <laughs> I'll give it a three. I was contemplating even higher than that, but... I think part of the thing that is different is I watched it in a cut like over a couple of settings instead of just like sitting and watching it in one setting. So I almost feel like every part of their breakup was like a different watch for me. Like I watched three movies. Uh, <laughs> I sat and I watched the whole thing and I was like, is it done? And I did that about three times. Oh, which is not a good sign. OK, well, then what are your recommendations? Okay, slash doki. So I'm going to go with the classic. Also, British fellow, also American woman, just swap the celebrity status, Notting Hill. That was going to be one of mine. Because it's a good one. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, Once More with Feeling. Um, there, it is a little different because they are both more celebrity status and they kind of fucked up each other's career, but it's got the like years later situation mm -hmm. involved. So that's Once More with Feeling by Elise Sussman. Thank mm -hmm. you. The book. You should check out our episode on that. Uh, it was pretty cool because we're pretty cool ladies. We're like so cool and we do like really cool podcasts. <laughs> Did you notice? You You're, really really You're really selling it. You're really selling it. You listen to this far in the podcast so you know that we're just like we're so cool. So What about you, Liz? Um, well, since I can't recommend Notting Hill anymore, I'm going to recommend Pucking Wild by Emily Rath, which is also a reverse age gap. Um, there's also a lot of trauma with the uh, Tess, um, her divorce. 
Uh, but it's a hockey romance and it's pretty spicy. So if you're like, but I wanted more spice and also hot boys on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> I always want hot boys on the ice. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, I will say the age gap in that is he's like 22, though. So e. you kind of have to just like forget mm. that. <laughs> and I think she's like 32 or something. But just don't just don't think about it. Just don't think about it. <laughs> Oh, gosh okay. okay well that's the end of the episode <laughs> folks if you liked this find us out on the socials at wrong dust jackets or go to our website uh wrong we've got all sorts of uh blog posts out there of books that have not made episodes as well as a list of what is coming up next and please, whatever listening app you're on, whether it's Spotify, Apple, YouTube Music, whatever the hell you're listening on, if you could give us like five stars or a like, um, whatever's available to you, we'll take it. <laughs> and that's all I've got. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye now. Goodbye. Thank you.